Hi everyone, Steve Patterson here from Photoshop Essentials. In this video, I'll show you how to turn your images into a simple vertical photo collage with Photoshop. To follow along, you'll want to be using Photoshop CC, and you'll find a link to the latest version in the video description. If you like these videos, be sure to subscribe, and let's get started. We'll start by creating a new Photoshop document. When you launch Photoshop CC without opening an image, you're taken to the home screen. To create a new document from the home screen, click the Create New button. Or, if you're not on the home screen, you can go up to the File menu in the menu bar and choose New. Either way opens the New Document dialog box. In the Preset Details panel, enter the document's width and height. For this tutorial, I'll create a document that's twice as wide as it is tall. I'm using a 4K display, so I'll create a fairly large document by setting the width to 3000 pixels and the height to 1500. If you're working with a lower screen resolution, you may want to follow along with a smaller document that fits better on your screen. In that case, set the width to 1500 pixels and the height to 750. I'll switch back to my previous settings. The resolution value only applies to print, so if you're creating a collage for the web or for viewing on screen, you can ignore this option. But if you're creating it for print, then set the resolution value to 300 pixels per inch, which is the industry standard for high quality printing. Leave the background contents set to white and all other options at their defaults. Then click the Create button to create your new document. Next, we'll divide our document into vertical sections, and we'll do that by adding some guides. Go up to the View menu in the menu bar and choose New Guide Layout. The New Guide Layout feature is only available in Photoshop CC. In the dialog box, make sure that Columns is selected so we're adding vertical guides. Then enter the number of columns you need based on the number of images you'll be using. I have six images, so I'll enter six. Leave the width field empty to let Photoshop space the guides out equally. And since we don't want any space between the columns, leave the gutter field empty as well, or you can set it to zero. We also don't need any horizontal guides, so leave the rows option unchecked. Then click OK to close the dialog box, and we have our guides dividing up the canvas. Next, open the images you'll be placing into the collage by going up to the File menu and choosing Open. Then navigate to the folder that holds your images. To make things easier, I've renamed my images based on where they will appear in the collage from left to right. So image 1 will be the first image on the left, image 2 will appear beside it, and all the way to image 6 on the right. We're going to open all of our images into Photoshop at once. To select multiple images, click on your first image to select it, and then press and hold your control key or the command key on a Mac and click on the others. Then click Open. Each one opens in its own separate document and we can switch between the documents by clicking on the tabs. For now, switch back to your main collage document. At this point, moving your images into the collage is just a matter of repeating the same steps with each image. And the first step is to draw a selection around one of the vertical strips. Select the rectangular marquee tool from the toolbar. Then draw a selection around one of the sections. I'll start with the first one on the left. Click in the upper left corner and then keep your mouse button down and drag to the bottom right corner. Your selection outline should snap to the guides. If it's not, go up to the View menu in the menu bar and make sure that Snap is turned on. It should have a check mark beside it. And in the Snap To menu, make sure that Guides is also turned on. You should see your selection outline around the first section. Switch to the image you want to place inside the selection by clicking its tab. Here's the first image I'm using. I downloaded all of my images from Adobe Stock, and you'll find links in the video description. Select the image by going up to the Select menu and choosing All. Then copy it by going up to the Edit menu and choosing Copy. Switch back to your main document by clicking its tab. And then to paste the image into your selection, go up to the Edit menu, choose Paste Special, and then choose Paste Into. 
The image, or at least part of it, appears inside the section. If your image is too wide to fit within the narrow space, then only part of it will be visible. And chances are it's not the part you want to display. So we'll learn how to move and resize the image in a moment. But notice that our selection outline is now gone. Instead, in the Layers panel, we see that not only has Photoshop placed the image on its own layer, but our selection outline has been converted into a layer mask. The white part of the mask is the area that was inside the selection, and that's where the image is visible in the document. And the black part was everything outside the selection. This is where the image is hidden. Also notice that the space between the Layers thumbnail and the Mask thumbnail is empty. Normally, we'd see a link icon here, which you can turn on by clicking in the empty space. But when the link icon is visible, the layer and the mask are linked together. And this means that we can't move or resize the image without doing the same thing to the mask. We need to adjust the image without affecting the mask, so if you see the link icon, click on it to turn it off. Also, make sure the image, not the layer mask, is selected. You should see a white border around the image thumbnail. To resize and move the image into place, go up to the Edit menu and choose Free Transform. This places the Free Transform box and handles around the image. If you can't see all of the handles because your image is too big, go up to the View menu and choose Fit on Screen. Then click inside the Free Transform box and drag your subject into view. In my case, I think the image looks to be about the right size. But if you need to resize it, click and drag any of the handles. As of Photoshop CC 2019, Free Transform now scales images proportionally by default, so there's no need to hold Shift. But you can scale the image from its center by holding Alt or Option on a Mac as you drag. To accept your changes and close Free Transform, click the check mark in the options bar. And we now have our first image in place. Adding the rest of the images is just a matter of repeating the same steps. Make sure the Rectangular Marquee tool is selected in the toolbar. Then click and drag out a selection around the next vertical section. Switch to the image you want to place inside the selection by clicking its tab. I'll choose my second image. Select the image by going up to the Select menu and choosing All, and then copy it by going to the Edit menu and choosing Copy. Switch back to your main document by clicking its tab, and then paste the image into the selection by going up to the Edit menu, choosing Paste Special, and then choosing Paste Into. Back in the Layers panel, we see the image on its own layer, and our selection outline has been converted into a layer mask. And by default, the layer and the mask should be unlinked, with no link icon between them. To move and resize the image, go up to the Edit menu and choose Free Transform. Then move your subject into place by dragging inside the Free Transform box. If you can't see the handles around the image, go up to the View menu and choose Fit on Screen. And then drag the handles to resize it. Hold Alt or Option on a Mac to resize it from its center. I'll move my image up a bit higher. And you can also use the arrow keys on your keyboard to nudge the image into place. To accept it, click the check mark in the Options bar. I'll zoom in a bit closer by holding my Control key or the Command key on a Mac and pressing the plus sign on my keyboard. Let's quickly go through the steps with one more image and then I'll fast forward to the end. First, draw a selection outline around the next vertical section and then switch to your next image. Select it by going to Select All and then copy it by going to Edit Copy. Switch back to your main document and then go to Edit, Paste Special and Paste Into. Select the Free Transform command by going to Edit, Free Transform, and then drag your subject into place. Drag the handles to resize the image, or nudge it into place with the arrow keys on your keyboard. 
and to accept it, click the check mark in the options bar. So now that we know the steps, I'll fast forward through my other images until they're all added to the collage. When you're done, the images will appear on their own separate layers in the Layers panel, and each one will have its own layer mask showing where the image is visible in the collage. The only thing I want to change here is that I think the guy on the left should be moved up a bit higher. So rather than using Free Transform, I'll select the Move tool from the toolbar. In the Options bar, I'll make sure that Auto Select is turned on and set to Layer so I can select the image just by clicking on it. Then I'll click on the guy with the Move tool and I'll nudge him upward using my arrow keys. And I think that looks better. I'll zoom back in on my image by going up to the View menu and choosing 100%. At this point, we're done with our guides, so to remove them, go up to the View menu and choose Clear Guides. To add the borders, we'll use a stroke layer effect, but rather than applying it to one image at a time, we'll add the stroke to the first image and then copy and paste it onto the others. In the Layers panel, select the first image on the left by clicking its thumbnail. Then click the Layer Effects icon at the bottom and choose Stroke from the list. In the Layer Style dialog box, click the Reset to Default button so we're both starting with the default stroke settings. Then choose a new color for the stroke by clicking the color swatch. In the Color Picker, choose White, and then click OK. And we can already see the stroke around the first image on the left. Change the position of the stroke from Inside to center so that the stroke's width will be divided equally between this image and the image beside it. And finally, choose a size for your stroke. Thin strokes tend to look best, so I'll set mine to 4 pixels. When you're done, click OK to close the dialog box. So now that we've applied the stroke to one layer, we can copy and paste it onto the others. To copy it, go up to the Layer menu, choose Layer Style, and then choose Copy Layer Style. Next, we need to select the other layers. Start by selecting the next layer directly above the one where we applied the stroke. Then press and hold your Shift key and click on the top layer. This selects both layers plus all layers in between. To paste the stroke, go back to the Layer menu, choose Layer Style, and this time choose Paste Layer Style. And now we see the stroke around the other images as well. The only problem with the stroke is that if I select the Zoom tool from the toolbar and I zoom in on it, we see that the stroke around the outside of the collage is only half as wide as the stroke between the images. To fix that, we'll add a new layer above the images, apply the stroke again, and then change its position. In the Layers panel, click on the top layer to select it. Then at the bottom, click the Add New Layer icon. A new blank layer appears above the images. At the moment, the layer is transparent, and Photoshop won't display the stroke in front of transparency. So we first need to add some content to the layer, and the quickest way is to fill the layer with our foreground color. By default, your foreground color is black, as we see in the color swatch in the toolbar. We're going to hide the color once we add it, so if your foreground color is set to something else, that's fine. To fill the layer with your foreground color, press Alt Backspace on a Windows PC or Option Delete on a Mac. The color temporarily blocks the collage from view. Then paste the stroke onto the layer by going back to the Layer menu, choosing Layer Style, and again choosing Paste Layer Style. In the Layers panel, double click on the word Stroke below the top layer. This reopens the Layer Style dialog box so you can edit your settings. Leave the size value the same as before, but change the position from Center to Inside. This moves the entire width of the stroke to the inside of the image. When you're done, click OK to close the dialog box. And then, back in the Layers panel, hide the contents of the top layer by lowering the Fill value all the way down to 0%.
unlike the opacity value above it, which hides both the layer's contents and any layer effects we've applied. Fill hides only the contents. Layer effects, like our stroke, remain visible. And now if I zoom back in on the stroke, we see that the width around the outer edges and the width between the images is the same. So at this point, the main collage is done. But if you find that there are too many different colors in your images, all fighting for attention, here's an easy way to unify the colors and blend the whole collage together. In the Layers panel, make sure the top layer is still selected. Then click the New Fill or Adjustment Layer icon at the bottom and choose a solid color fill layer from the list. In the Color Picker, choose a single color to mix in with the others. I like to use orange because it also helps to warm the images up. I'll set the H or Hue value to 40, the S or Saturation value to 100, and the B for Brightness value also to 100. When you're done, click OK. The color temporarily blocks the images from view. And in the Layers panel, the Fill layer appears at the top. To blend the color in with the images, first change the blend mode of the fill layer from normal to color. Then lower the opacity of the layer. A good way to work is to start by lowering the value all the way down to 0% so you're seeing just the original colors. Then slowly increase the value until you're mixing in just enough of the fill layer to blend everything together. Generally, an opacity of 10 to 15% is all you need. You can toggle the fill layer on and off to compare the original colors with the colorized version by clicking its visibility icon. So here are the images with their original colors, and here's how they look with the fill layer blended in. And there we have it. That's how to create a simple vertical photo collage with Photoshop. As always, I hope you enjoyed this video, and if you found it helpful, don't forget to like it, share it, and subscribe to my channel for more videos. Visit my website, photoshopessentials.com, where you'll find hundreds of Photoshop tutorials. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. I'm Steve Patterson from photoshopessentials.com.